Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech, I'm Josh. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to take the stock body of the main Flurkin and turn it into the Boomin Flurkin. Now to do this build, you can either choose to take your original Flurkin, cut off your vertical fins, and build along with us with the Boomin add-on kit, or you can simply purchase the Boomin Flurkin speed build kit. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. The Boomin Flurkin add-on kit is relatively simple, and by now hopefully you built the main Flurkin airframe. Now you're going to notice that this is maker foam and whether it's maker foam, flight test foam or any other foam that we design in the future, these steps are going to be the exact same. The color and the facing may be a little bit different. We always want to make sure we're innovating and creating new foams for you to be able to build models with. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pop out our pieces, mainly the left and the right boom that we're going to assemble first. A really easy way to be able to pop out our pieces is either by cutting through the tabs with a razor blade or by just gently opening up laterally the pieces of foam around the piece itself. This should have, let the pieces pop through. One thing you don't want to do is pull the piece from the foam plank itself because that can tear off your facing paper. And we'll go ahead and put the rest of the pieces to the side here. So what we have here is our two main booms. We're gonna have both our left and our right boom and our upper rear plates. And along with that, we're also gonna use these plywood pieces that's included in the kit. And we're gonna be gluing these doublers down. But first, let's go ahead and weed out the areas where we have our score cuts and remove that foam. And then we can pause the video and make sure yours looks the exact same. It's always a really good idea to doll the very tip of your blade. This keeps it from going through the front of the facing paper. So you can doll it with a simple piece of sandpaper or you can take it out to a concrete pad and run the tip on it. Make sure when we're going along with the score cut that we don't go all the way through the facing paper where it may accidentally cut through. If you do accidentally cut through, no worries at all. You can simply repair it with a piece of tape. Whenever we're removing the facing paper, I like to open up 180 degrees and gently roll this off of the facing paper on the bottom. And we'll go ahead and go to the back here. And take your time and be very gentle with these pieces here. Because it's such small, skinny, long pieces, it's very easy to be able to tear the facing paper away or distort your piece. At the end of the day, you can always glue it back together, but it just makes it easier if you take your time and do it right now. If you notice that your pieces are coming off in little chunks, go back and rescore it one more time again, a little bit closer to the facing paper, and that way it'll release easy. And while we're at it, we're gonna do a double bevel cut on the two center score lines that you see here and here. To do our double bevel cuts, we're gonna fold it 180 degrees. And just like we did so many other times on the original Flurkin airframe, we're gonna cut about a 45 degree. There's angle one. And here's angle two. Now that we've done our double bevel cuts, we're gonna do our single bevel cuts on the front and the rear of our booms. These are gonna be on the front and rear portions of our foam. So we're gonna fold this on the 80 or 180 degrees. And I'm just gonna use a gentle sawing motion to be able to get my 45. Same process now on the rear. We'll just fold that 180 degrees. And this time I can go from the top down. Finally, I'm just gonna go ahead and gently lift up right where the etch marks are on both sides and we're ready to do the exact same process now on the other boom. Now that we have both main booms prepared, let's go ahead and prepare the top rear plates of our booms and we're ready to move on to our next step. All we need is a simple score cut right down above the facer paper and to remove those outer channels. Notice that whenever I'm removing these channels, I'm always keeping the tension of the facing paper up against the foam and I'm pulling the area that I wanna remove to the side and away. This keeps us from destroying the piece that we're trying to preserve. And there we go. Feel free to pause the video now. Make sure that your pieces look just like you see here and we're ready to move on to the next step by gluing down our doublers and the main booms. Now this twin boom design can take many different accessories from a landing gear kit to our pontoons which makes it an all-terrain flurgan. We want to put these mounting planes down now so that way you can add those pontoons on later and also be able to remove them whenever you want. So let's go and pop out our pieces. And we want to be very careful that we don't accidentally put any glue that's going to squeeze out and cover up the circle. So I'm just going to focus the main portion of my glue at least a quarter inch away 
going towards the edge. You don't need a lot, just a little. I prefer when possible to be able to put the glue on the foam because it'll stay hot a lot longer than if you put it directly onto the wood. I'm just gonna slide this around, make sure that my piece is inside the edge marks, and then I'll move on to my next piece. It's always a good idea to try to test fit everything, make sure it lines up, so we can come back with our glue. Again, a little drop on one side, a little drop on the other, and that's all you need. We really wanted this design to be the most versatile design possible, so I'm really excited about the feedback and the excitement we've had around this whole line from the Nano Flurkin all the way up to this version here. I do think that this Twin Boom Flurkin is my favorite version of all because it's the most capable and it looks incredible in the air. Let's go do the same process now on the other side. You may be wondering what these little tiny etch marks are just behind the stubbler. That's for the optional landing gear. That's something that we can easily cut in later and mount to it. Now that we have all of our doubler plates installed, we're ready to build our main booms. Let's first start by practicing the folds that we're gonna to need to do to be able to give this proper angle. Now it's incredibly important that there's no tension when we fold this together and fold this down to our main piece right here. If there's too much tension, this piece is gonna to be too wide and when you line this up with the fuselage, it's gonna to protrude too far over towards the ailerons and too far over towards the body. So make sure you got your double bevel sharp enough so that it can easily press right up against this front plate without bulbousing out. If you have to go back and make your double bevels a little bit steeper, that's okay. Now if you built the main body of the Flurkin, what we're talking about right now is very familiar to you because we had you overcut those bevels just to make sure there was no resistance so everything lined up perfectly. That looks wonderful. And you can see that we have nice parallel. As I push this in, there's no protruding. It's the same dimensions on the front and on the back. Now that we're happy with the way everything fits, we're gonna apply a bead of glue right down in the seam on both sides. I am gonna avoid where the wheels are gonna go in because that area is gonna be cut out. If you have glue in there, you can cut it out, but it will be a little bit more difficult. My glue bead's gonna start a quarter inch from the edge. It's gonna stop a quarter inch from the edge here, avoiding where the wheels are. And then also we're gonna put a bead of glue on both sides of the front and also the single bevel. Now this is a lot of glue to lay down, so make sure you have plenty of glue in your hot glue gun. And we're gonna always practice our fold before we do it. So in other words, I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna press this down using the table as my friend. Then we're gonna hold it in this angle until the glue fully dries. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and do it for real this time. All right, I got my glue stick handy. Again, I'm gonna start about a quarter of an inch from the edge. I'm gonna skip over where the wheels are gonna go. Do it one more time on the other side, skipping over. And now I'm gonna place my glue a little drop right where it folds. And I'm gonna focus my glue right on the edge of both sides of the front of my boom. I can fold this together, use the table as my friend, press it down. And the only real area that I'm putting most of my pressure on is gonna be right here at the top, establishing this angle that we see here. Now I'm gonna take a deep breath. I'm gonna give this a couple minutes and let it fully dry. All right, it's been a couple minutes here and you can see that nothing's fighting anything at all. We have a nice clean edge on the very front. And we can even go back now and we can trip this top flush with where our motor is going to go. And now with that tiny little bend that we did, we should be able to use the table once again as our friend. Press this flat down against the table. And it's very important that these two back edges meet exactly on top of each other while we're pressing down. Go ahead and inspect this from all angles. Once we're happy with that, we can fold it open like a door. I'm going to focus my glue right between the paper and the foam where it meets, taking all the way to the tip. Oop, I gotta get a little bit more glue. There we go. We're using the Flight Test Foam Glue. This glue dries a little bit slower at a cooler temperature, but it's incredible how well it holds. So it gives you plenty of time to work with it, but it doesn't slow down your build at all. Notice I also put a little bit of glue on these two pieces here because at the angle, we're gonna want a little bit more glue there to kind of fill that gap. I'm gonna fold this in now. I'm gonna let the two pieces overlap. Notice I'm not rushing anything at all. There we go. This table is our friend. We're gonna press down firmly. If any glue ever squeezes out and you don't wanna ask any glue to the table, just count to 10. Move it a little bit, count to 10, move it a little bit, and that keeps you from glued into the table and keeps any extra residual off of it. There we go. 
Let's go do the exact same process now on the other side. Okay, same process before as the other one here. Again, we're gonna first do our fold and make sure that we can easily fold this up. And just like the first one, I'm actually gonna open up this angle a little bit wider. If you guys ever think that I get things on the first try, now you know. Let's go ahead and hold this in. To start our fit. And that's fantastic. Got plenty of glue on our hot glue gun. We'll put a bead of glue starting the stop at about a quarter inch of the edge. And if you plan on putting your wheels in, go ahead and avoid that area as well. Getting the healthy on each side. We'll drop in the middle there. We'll bring it together. And up. And just like before, I'm putting all my energy right on the very front here, making sure this is flat against the table and everything is parallel with each other along back along the boom. Once that glue is fully dried, we're gonna trim that top portion flush just so when we mount our motors later on, it fits nicely. Next, we'll put our attention towards the rear of the boom. Both sides of the rear of the boom should come down completely and both ends should meet up exactly on each side. That's great. Once we're happy with the fit, we can put a bead of glue right down each side of the rear portion of the bottom of our boom. I like to go all the way to the tip, make sure we get that, uh, get that paper firmly glued down. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on this portion too. Notice we're not rushing anything. Let's wrap this back and forth a little bit, seal that down. Again, all my focus is on the very back here, making sure it's lined up nicely and I'm flat against the table. And it looks great. Now that both of our main booms are built, we're gonna go ahead and put our attention towards the rear of the top of the booms and we're gonna mount our top plates here. It's always nice to do a quick test fit here in case we have to make any kind of adjustments. There will be a little bit of friction here. And you notice I pushed it down and then I slid it towards the back so that the very rear lines up with this. That looks wonderful. Now because this grips it so well, I'm gonna slide it out the exact way that I put this in. Once we're happy with the fit, I'm gonna put a bead of glue at a 45 degree angle so it hits both the paper and the foam. And just for some added measure, a little bit of glue right on the very top of the foam because it kind of hits at an angle. This will really help seal the edges. I'm gonna slide it in now. Right up to the front. And then we have a couple different options we can do here. We can use a ruler and press this against it, or we can use a table as our friend. All right, one down, one to go. Same process as before. We're gonna do a quick test fit. Start from the wide open end, put an even pressure, sun all the way back to the back. Oops, <laughs> pushed a little too hard. There we go. Then we'll slide that out. And a little bead of glue right on the top here. Gentle pressure all the way there, right there. 180 degrees right down against the table. If you're worried about gluing to the table, you can always hop it up after about 10 seconds and hop it into a different spot. Make sure you take either a scraper, a ruler, a razor blade and scrape off any glue globs that you may have on the table or you may accidentally dent your foam board. Now, if you're lacking a lot of the items that I'm using here, we have a really great thing called the Crafty Kit. The Crafty Kit gets you the high-end FT300 glue gun, the 18-inch ruler, plenty of glue sticks, a triangle square, a utility knife, and so many other things that you use commonly, even down to a servo tester. Our two main booms are now complete. We're gonna put these aside momentarily and put our attention towards the rear fins, and then we can go ahead and attach both of them onto our booms. 
So these two pieces we have here are our left and right fin. You're gonna notice that the right fin has a cutout that's made for the push rod guide tube. Let's go ahead and first prepare both the fins by doing our fold over. For that, all we simply need to do is do our score cut on the leading edge, remove the foam, and once we're happy with that, we can come back, lay a bead of glue, and then fold it over. We're going to fold this over. We're going to hold it down and the coldness of the ruler helps dry the glue super quick. And then all you simply need to do is scrape off any extra glue that you may have. Same process on the other side. Score cut. Remove the foam. Do a quick practice fold. Thin bead of glue. And again, if you have a metal straight edge, you can bring it right down to the edge, hold it there for about 15 seconds, and you get a nice clean edge. Now that we have our front foldovers done, in your kit's gonna be included a push rod guide tube. Now this is a really great tube. It's really good for scratch builders as well. We have it available separately on our store. What we wanna do is we wanna take the edge of our push rod guide tube and we gently with multiple motions, we want to go down and slowly start crushing this down and guiding along with our score cuts. There's one, there's two. Take your time with this because we don't want to damage the other side where it shows like a dent or a wrinkle. Once we're happy with that, we should be able to fully press this guide tube right down in there, just like you see here. Now for this installation, I want the very tip of my push rod guide tube to only go about a quarter of an inch past where our double score cut is. This is gonna give the push rod the proper angle to meet up with our control horn. Once we're happy with that, I'm gonna carefully lift this up. I'm gonna place a bead of glue starting and stopping a quarter inch from the edge. It's a really good idea to have a little scrap piece of foam handy if you need it. Again, I'm gonna lay this down a quarter inch and I'm just gonna gently press it down, walk it all the way through and then let it dry. Hold this flat against the table so your fin doesn't deform as the glue dries. Now that the fin is dried, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick test fit with my push rod tube. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick test fit with my push rod. And we shouldn't really have any resistance at all on our push rod, and we don't. Both of our fins are prepared now. Let's go ahead and bring both our left and our right boom in. We're not gonna be gluing the fins down quite yet because we wanna match the angle once the booms are mounted to the fuselage of the Slurkin. What we are gonna do is we are gonna loosely fasten this to our right boom and get our servo wire cut and pushed in. So you can see right here, we have a right boom. We know it's our right boom because there's an R in there. And you'll also notice that this push rod boom goes right where the slot's gonna be. So I'm just gonna glide this right down in Sometimes it resists just a little bit and that's okay. Push that forward. And it sits right in. Now you're gonna notice that this push rod tube is way longer than it needs to be. If we ended up mounting it here, it would not only obstruct where our wheel is, but it also give us a problem with putting our motor in and our servos and a whole bunch of other issues. So we're gonna lift up our push rod tube and you're gonna see where the rear of this wooden block is. We wanna go straight up. We wanna go maybe about an inch ahead right here and we wanna cut that. There we go. And we can put this aside, you can save it, you can do whatever you want. And now that we have our push rod guide tube cut to length, we're gonna go ahead and guide the push rod tube through, but this time we're gonna keep the Z bend actually down in the center of the fuselage. So I'm gonna guide this through. You can see right here is my Z bend, and it's popping out the top like you see here. Let's go ahead and prepare our elevator servo at this point and get it ready to install. For this application, we're gonna be using our FT9 gram servo. This works on both our B pack and our C pack power packs and all the models we designed around those power plants. We're gonna open this up. 
Now there's one critical thing I really want to point out, with, especially with this design and many other flight test designs. More throw does not mean more control. And for that reason, we're going to select the single arm servo arm, but we're only going to be putting it in the second hole. Now if you want to get really crazy and you want to adjust your transmitter to be the exact throw, you can go to the third one, but definitely do not go any further out than that because too much throw is going to make this plane a little bit too pitchy and a little bit too squirrely. If you want the super smooth flights that you're seeing in our videos, I'm actually using the second hole found in the middle. I have plenty of control. It's designed for that. These are, uh, our 9 gram servos are pre-centered. I am going to test this before I glue it in because once I glue it in, that's it. We can't do anything else with it. I'm going to go ahead and mount this. I'm going to grab my ESC, my servo tester from my crafty kit. We'll power it right through the BEC. And I'll just plug in my battery. You can see it light up. Press the button one time to where it says neutral. And now I can plug up to three different servos and test them. The signal wire is always going to be either the white or the orange wire. I'm going to press that in. And you can see it didn't move an inch. Let me show you these other features. We have automatic. We have manual. And then we have center. Now this is centered, I can attach my servo arm screw. It's always a good idea whenever you're mounting a servo, especially one that's going to be either sealed in your wing or your fuselage, test it out first, make sure that everything works. And that will save you from having to cut it open and glue a new one in. Oh my gosh. It's also really important whenever you're testing your servos, use either the battery eliminator circuit from your ESC or a single cell battery. It's important that you don't put more than five volts through your servo or your servo tester or you'll destroy them both. Also, if you're using our flight test ESCs and you see this extra little lead here, this is not BEC out. This is actually battery voltage out. If you put this as a battery voltage supply to either your receiver or your servo tester or any other component and it's not rated for that, it's going to blow it up. I always like keeping my servo testers kind of handy because if at any point I move this accidentally, I can easily go back and recenter it. Now the location of where this is going to mount is going to be just behind the wheels. I like to mount it. I like to mount it about at least a half an inch behind the wheels so that way the wheels won't actually come up and make contact with it. Now the way our servo is going to mount in here is going to be on the sticker side and our servo wire is going to go forward. If you plan on putting the wheels in, it's really important that you make sure that you don't mount the servo where the wheels are going to go. I like to keep it at least a half inch to three quarters of an inch behind it. Now if your pushrod guide tubes are too close, you can always remove your pushrod, cut a little bit shorter. To make everything stick the best it can, I'm going to carefully remove the sticker on my servo. And I'm going to use either some like 60 or 100 grit sandpaper or just the edge of my razor. And I'm going to scratch this up really good to make it bite in. Now I can mount my servo. Just going to rock it back and forth real gently until it pops through. I should pull this out a little bit more. If at any point this accidentally moves, I can easily go ahead and recenter my servo. Now I'm going to slide it back in and get it into position. I don't like any kind of unnecessary binding on my servo, so you can see it naturally pushes it down. I'm gonna move this about three quarters of an inch behind where the wheel is gonna go, that way it doesn't interfere with my wheel, and I'm gonna glue it right against the wall as you see here. So all I simply need to do is kind of get it in the position I want. I have the location I want, I already did my test fit. I'm just going to stick my glue gun down right there, fill in that gap, let it seat down a little bit, and then push it over. Now this point calls for a lot of patience. You don't want to move this. You want this to get 100% dry and hardened before you move on to the next step. Because if it cracks loose here, you're going to have to either take off the boom, cut into the foam, or do something that you don't want to do in the future. So we're going to let this dry. We're going to step away for a couple minutes, and then we're going to come back and do our next step. All right. Everything is firmly glued down. We're ready to move on to our next step. Now you would think that this is probably done and you're ready to move on, but one thing we really want to do is we want to make sure that this pushrod guide tube does not move at all. This plane is incapable of incredible speeds. We also want no play in our control surfaces. To get that, I'm simply going to glue this pushrod guide tube straight over against the side boom on the opposite side that we glued the servo down. I'm going to go back maybe about a half inch. I'm going to put a little bit of glue right on the boom side there. And now I can move that over. I'm going to wiggle it around and I'm going to hold that till it fully dries. 
And now that everything is dried, I'm just gonna plug in my servo tester, get everything working again, and just put it on auto. And that looks fantastic. I'm back in the middle, everything's working good. Let's go ahead and plug it, and we'll move on to our next step. Now you're gonna notice that we have a lot of extra wire right here. We're gonna go ahead and actually make our final Z-Bend, even with the wire here before we put our elevator on, and that's because the hinge line is at the exact point of where the rear of this fin is. The only thing we wanna do that's important is we wanna make sure our servo is centered, and we wanna kinda of let this protrude out roughly about a quarter inch from the edge before we do our Z-Bend. There is some wiggle room, but it's easier to just do it this way. Now, with our pliers, we're gonna go ahead and grip it. <laughs> with our pliers, we're gonna go ahead and grip it as we project out straight as narrow, a little bit more there. And we're gonna bend this perpendicular to our fin. Just like that. Now we can grip this about two millimeters in and bend it straight down 90 degrees. Then finally, we're gonna cut it about a quarter inch from our last bend. If you wanna make this go from a modified Z-Bend to a traditional Z-Bend, simply grip it and bend it. There we go. Good. Now we're not gonna glue this main boom down because when we mount this to our wings, we're gonna set this flat against the table and we're gonna make sure that both fins and also our elevator are perpendicular and at the proper angles. We can put this aside now and we're going to loosely mount our other fin on just so we don't lose it. Both our main booms are now prepped and prepared. We got our servos installed. We're ready to move on to our next step, which is actually going to be assembling our motor mounts and mounting our motors. All right, so it's a new day and we're ready to move on to our next step, which is going to be building our motor mounts. Now the remaining pieces that you see here that are included in our boom and flirting kit are the motor mounts themselves. So let's go ahead and take our time and pop out all the pieces that we need. And keep in mind that you're gonna have one leftover piece in this wood kit, which is your control horn for your tail. Make sure you don't lose that. Now, because this is a higher energy, higher speed airplane, I would strongly recommend not using hot glue. Although you can in some applications, and we certainly have, we do carry now zap adhesives, um, that, which means basically you can get any type of adhesive glue that you need for model aviation right from our own store. The ones I'm gonna be using today are gonna be Zapagap, and the spray accelerator. The spray accelerator is real nice because it can mist over it. If you are wanting to use an instant adhesive on foam, you can use our foam safe CA and the foam safe accelerator. Let's first start by putting our pieces together. I like to put the two side cheeks together first. There we go. and we'll just press that down into place. Everything jigs in, it has just a nice amount of tension. And we wanna make sure that it's firmly pressed in where there's no gaps. Once you're happy with the fit, I'm gonna place a thin bead of glue right in the seams and let it soak in. I prefer the medium thickness viscosity because it can still flow inside the gaps and give you a nice strong bond. I wouldn't recommend using thin CA for this application. Uh, I would definitely recommend either the medium or the thick. We're gonna hold this for about 15 seconds and let it fully dry. Then we're gonna repeat the exact same process for the next motor mount. And just like before, we'll place our two sides in. Press the tab right over the bottom plate and it'll all fit in. We're making sure that there's no gaps and everything is flush. Then we can come back with our instant zap CA. So I don't want to accidentally throw this away along with my control horn, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it someplace safe. Here no. All right, so now that we have our main motor mounts built, we're gonna go ahead and move on to installing our motors. Now for the Boom and Flurkin, our recommendation is the 2207-2400 KV motors. This motor is a higher power version of our classic F motor. This motor can go into any of our F packs. Just be prepared, you're gonna get some crazy performance and crazy speed. Now if you buy our value bundle or you get the Power Pack FSE version, uh, you will get these pre-soldered with bullet connectors. If you buy the motor by itself straight from our store, uh, you will not have these bullet connectors. You're gonna need to direct solder it to our ESC or you're gonna need to solder your own bullets yourself. 
Let's go ahead and pass our three bullets one at a time right through the lower oval on the bottom. And you're gonna notice that there's only two holes here that we have to mount this in. There we go. We're gonna take our two millimeter driver here. I like to leave a little bit of slack at the very bottom here so I'm not pinching my leads. And we're just gonna start the first one. I'm gonna leave it slightly loose, and then we'll screw in the next one, and then we'll tighten them both down. I would recommend using blue Loctite on the threads if you wanna make sure that this ever comes loose. Be careful on using red Loctite because red Loctite is forever. Let's go ahead and do the next motor. Again, as I'm screwing these in, I'm not tightening them down all the way. I'm making sure I can thread both of mine in before tightening it in. Sorry. Now that we have the motors installed, our next step is to connect the 3.5 millimeter bullets to our 25 amp ESCs. Now it doesn't matter which order you connect these to because if it's spinning in the wrong direction, all we simply need to do is change any two of the three wires. Once we have this connected and we make sure that it's fully sealed, which means no brass is touching each other, we can go ahead and power it up using either our transmitter and receiver or a simple servo tester like we have in our crafty kit. To check the motor direction of our ESCs, we can either use the receiver and our battery hooked up or we can use a simple servo tester. We're gonna use the servo tester found in our crafty kit and we're gonna make sure that we line up the signal with the signal and the ground with the ground. In other words, the orange wire is gonna line up with the signal, the brown wire is gonna line up with the ground and we're gonna push this in. With this model, the connectors go in horizontally. Now we can make sure we're turned to minimum and we'll plug this in. And now as we give this throttle, you can see it spins. Now this motor currently is spinning clockwise. That is absolutely okay. We just wanna make sure we put the clockwise motor on the left side of the airframe. And an easy way to know which motor is goes to the left and to the right is once you've figured out which one's clockwise and counterclockwise, mark that motor mount with a left or a right marking. So this one's clockwise. We're gonna go ahead and put this on the left. We don't need to change it. And we'll do the same process now on the other side. And this motor's running counterclockwise, which is absolutely perfect. This motor's gonna go on our right-hand side. And once again, if you need to change any of these motors directions, all you simply need to do is unplug any two of the leads and swap them. I'm gonna put these motors to the side and we can start preparing our main airframe and our booms for mounting. So we're gonna bring our airframe back in. And now if you followed along with the original video, at this point, you should basically have your front nose built, your servos aligned, everything should be ready for the booms. The only difference is, is we don't have the rear motor installed because frankly, we don't need it. But I'm sure some of you awesome folks are probably gonna put a third motor in here and make it really cool. Now, one of the main differences in the airframe with the uh, Boom and Flurkin is that these elevons are no longer elevons, they're ailerons, which means we do not need to reflex in them where before it was kind of angled up. Now these can be perfectly flush. If maybe you're modifying an old Flurkin that has the reflex, simply dial it in through your sub trim, or you can make new push rods and get it neutral. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over on this back, and there are a couple of things that we kind of need to point out and start preparing for, and that's for guiding our wires. We're gonna to need to cut two different holes on each side of the wings to be able to guide both our power wires and our servo wires through them. To find out the proper spacing, we're gonna use the spacer guide that we have included in our kit. And this is gonna help us make sure that our booms are not too close where the props are gonna strike the front nose. It's gonna be very close, but it's not gonna hit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lay this on here. You notice that when you assembled your booms, that there was actually a stop plate on the back here and that both these sides are slightly uneven. That's to allow for the dihedral in the wings. So I'm gonna lay down my spacer. I'm gonna push this back end against the trailing edge of the wing. Now on the following side, turn this in the camera so you can see it. Now on the following side, I'm gonna bring this boom up right flush with where the elevon moves. Make sure you don't bring this too far back or your prop's gonna be too close to the front nose and it's gonna hit. So bring this right up just as you see here. And then I like to use a spacer, and the spacer, you're gonna see has a little bit of gap. If this spacer was hard up against the fuselage, that would be the bare minimum for the space that you need before it starts hitting. So what I like to see is at least an eighth inch gap, nice and parallel, all the way to the nose. Once I have that, I can take either a pencil or just a or very light pressure on something like a screwdriver to make a very soft indent. And if you look in the light, you'll see that we've now marked off the area that we can open up and be able to guide our wires through. Let's do this on both sides. 
Now make sure that when you're marking these out and you're laying these out, that the left boom goes on the left side, the right boom goes on the right side. The easiest way to tell the left and the right of an aircraft is by picturing yourself in the flight deck. As you're in the controls and you're flying the airplane, what's on your right side is on your right, what's on your left side is on your left. It's not as if you're looking towards the airplane from a spectator's point of view. It's only as a pilot. All right, and you can see again, I got a nice parallel line here. I'm gonna project it all the way forward. And if we did our job right when we are building this, this edge of the paper is gonna be the exact markings you're gonna to need to be able to do it. But every plane's a little bit different. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and carefully remove my nose. And you're going to see that there's a small gap right here. This is going to be the area that we're going to actually pass our wires through and we're just going to simply notch out the back side. So if we go about a half inch behind where the front nose meets and then straight over, this is going to be where we're going to cut our hole. And subsequently, if you look over here and you see right where this crease line is, that's a really great reference point. Cut yourself a hole that's no wider than our two etch marks, but is enough to be able to pass all the wires through. I typically like to start with about a half inch by half inch hole and open it up based on what I need. So here's reference line number one. Here's reference line number two. I'm gonna go right in the middle, right where this crease is. There we go. And let's do the same on the other side. There we go. Now keep in mind, we can always open this up a little bit more if we have to, to be able to pass our wires through. So you can see our power Y is pretty long. This is our XT60 power Y. It's our standard use power Y in all of our twin XT60 power packs. We're gonna first start by guiding up our main lead right to where we want the battery to go, and that's gonna be right here. Now we can go ahead and tuck back each lead through the back. Then up through the side. And then we can take each side of the lead and tuck it down through the back and then up out the side so then it can pass into the boom. Now with a little bit of wiggling and some patience and pressure, this should wiggle right down to where we can snag it with either a piece of wire or our needle nose pliers. With your kit, we have plenty of extra push rod material. It's really easy to be able to make a simple hook out of it and reach in and snag your wires. There we go. There's one side. Let's do the same on the other. And there we go. Good. I'm just gonna hold this up for you so you can kind of view in and you can see the routing of the wires. Now, along with our power wires, we're also gonna have our ESC leads that are gonna go from our main booms inwards as well too. For that reason, we're gonna wire in a servo extension on each side. Now, this can be either a 20 or a 30 centimeter extension. It's really important whenever you're routing your servo extensions to make sure that you put the part that's gonna plug into the receiver inside the fuselage. If you route it backwards, it's simply not gonna fit. Now, for the servo extensions, I find it's a lot easier to be able to push it through from the wingtip into the center of the body. Again, I'm just going to use my little push rod hook, reach in and grab it. There's one side. And sometimes it helps to use gravity as your friend. Just wiggle it back and forth. Now there's one last servo extension that we want to wire in as well, and that's going to be for our main elevator, and that's going to be on the right side. So again, we're going to picture ourselves in the flight deck. We're looking down, whatever's on our right side is on our right. It's gonna be on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my servo extension and I'm gonna route that through as well. And I'm just gonna get that right to the edge. And I'll get all my leads back to where they need to be. 
Now feel free to pause the video, make sure that all your leads look just like what you see right here. On the right hand side, we have our main power supply. We have our two servo extensions with the proper connections facing out. And on our left hand side, we have our power lead and one servo extension. Now at this point, we want to lay this flat on the table, make sure that we don't have anything that's going to dent our airframe. We want to make sure that all of our servo leads and power leads are pointing forwards. This is really important because we don't want to accidentally glue down anything that's going to get in the way or cause us any difficulty. Along with that also, we want to make sure that the main lead for our boom for our elevator is pointing forward as well, so we can make that connection easy. I like to take a little piece of tape and tape everything exactly where I want it on the very top so that way I can have it held in place so I can glue this down without having to be too concerned. I'm actually going to de-sticky it a little bit. I don't want this to make too much of a mess. There we go. Let's we'll pull that one like that. Stick it on the back side. And we'll take these two guys. And we'll take these leads here, kind of grab it. And then just bend it around and stick it. So now that we have this routed here, again, I'm gonna go back and do a quick test fit because we don't wanna to have to do this more than once. And we also wanna make sure that all the leads are pointing forward and not giving us any grief, like that. So let's go ahead and do one final test fit here before we glue anything down. We're gonna make sure again that we have none of our leads interfering with our boom and that our etch marks are lined up. And it's always a good idea to take our spacer and I wanna see at least an eighth of an inch and I want to see at least an eighth of an inch between the spacer and my body. All right, now that we're happy with everything, I'm going to take my glue gun, put a nice healthy bead right down the sides. I'm going to stop just shy of where our motor mounts go, right where before that notch. Do it one more time. And I'm going to lift this up here. I'm going to line my back edge up. I'll drop it down right over my reference guide. And then we're going to press it into place. Feel free to use a scrap piece of foam if you have any residual kind of leak out. And again, we want to make sure that we have a good amount of distance between the spacer. And again, we want to make sure we have a good eighth of an inch distance between the spacer and the edge of the body. Now I'm going to press this down. I'm going to hold this for a good two minutes, let it fully dry, making sure that our seams are nice and tight on both sides. And then once I'm happy with that and I've confirmed that everything is flat, I'm going to go back with a reinforcement bead of glue and then let that fully dry as well. Now that we've done one side, let's go and do the exact same process on the other side. Again, we're going to use the spacer. We're going to do a practice uh, placement here. We're going to make sure that our back trailing edge is lined up with the trailing edge of the wing. The outer surface of our boom is lined up flush with our aileron slot and that the booms are parallel from our spacer forward. Again, we're going to put a nice healthy bead right up to the edge where the motor mounts go. Let me grab an extra glue stick here. Again, the nice thing about our glue sticks, they give you a little bit extra time to work and you don't need super high temperatures. There we go. You want to line it right up with the edge of that aileron slot. Press it down, looking at those index marks that I made. There we go. Once we're happy with our alignment, we're going to press it in place. Same process as before. We're going to let it dry for at least two minutes, check our fit, make sure everything's good, and then we're going to go back with a reinforcement bead of glue and let that dry for two minutes. All right, everything is dry. It's been two minutes. I put my reinforcement bead down. Let's go ahead and flip this over 180 degrees and see how it looks. That's fantastic. You'll notice that both of our booms are flush on this portion here that's flat and where the dihedro kicks in, it just elevates just so slightly. That's exactly what we want to see. And it's also even on both sides. Can now carefully go ahead and release our tape. I'm just gonna leave everything taped in. I'm just gonna go ahead and release it there and let it sit on the top. Now friends, here's something that we have not tried out yet, but we are definitely gonna do so unless you guys do it first. I really have a good gut feeling that we could keep this as an Elevon mix, make it twin motor, and at the same time, eliminate the need for the rear elevator 
and simply kick these out just a little bit. In other words, it'll fly as a flying wing, but possibly give us the tracking, the stability with these dual rudders on it. That would make an awesome FPV platform and also look really cool. So if you guys want to try that, let me know how it goes. If not, I'm sure you'll see it popping up in an episode where we give it a shot ourselves. This could also be a fantastic configuration if you wanted to do a VTOL version of the Flurkin. At this point here, I'm gonna go ahead and put this temporarily to the side. I'm gonna bring in my elevator and I'm gonna prepare that for mounting on my tail. Now for our main elevator, you're gonna see that we have two rectangle etch marks and you're also gonna see our rear hinge line along with our control horn. You're also gonna see an etch line right on the very top. That is a fold over to give us a nice clean edge and also some reinforcement. Let's go ahead and take our razor blade and we'll go ahead and do a score cut around these etch lines along with this one and we'll remove the foam. An easy way to be able to dig out the foam whenever you have score cuts or a hidden pocket like you see here is to simply do your score cuts and then go back with either a barbecue skewer or a push rod wire and go ahead and just gently roll it up. If you start from the bottom, not push it against the facing paper, but just right at the bottom and lift up gently, it'll come out really clean. Let's go ahead and do a practice fold over here. Start getting that area creased over. I'll bring in my ruler, get that ready. And then I'm gonna put a very thin bead of glue right down on my foam. And then we'll fold it over. Now that our fold over is done, we're gonna bend this over 180 degrees. And on the elevator side, we're gonna cut a single bevel. To cut our single bevel, we're gonna take our razor blade just above the center facing paper at a greater than 90 degree angle, and then we're gonna glide it very gently down from one end to the other. It's really important to get as close to the middle as possible so that you have no resistance when you push it down. To give us a very much needed reinforcement and to make sure this airplane lasts for years, I'm gonna do a hot glue hinge. I'm gonna simply place my bead of glue right down the center, right on top of the facing paper, and put a thin bit ribbon, and put a thin ribbon of glue, take a scrap piece of foam, and then scrape it off. A little trick to dry to make this dry quicker and keep it from being tacky, lick the tip of your finger, drag it right over the hot glue, and it won't stick. Now that we have our elevator done, we can bring back in our fuselage, and you can see that we have plenty of room to be able to angle these. What we want to do now is we want to line up our tabs to the slots and press them in. There's one. And there's two. Now with the aircraft laid on the table, we want to sight down this. And typically, if you did everything right, they'll be perfectly perpendicular to the table and also the flat portion of your body. But if by any chance, maybe the booms are a little bit wider or a little bit narrower, you may have them bend one way or the other. It's not a big deal at all. All you simply need to do is make sure that they're both at the same angle, opposing each other or pointing towards each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and sight down through this. And if you follow along with this build, these are exactly 90 degrees from one another. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift up one surface at a time. I'm gonna put glue underneath it and I'm gonna press it down. I'm gonna hold it in place, keeping it even, and then I'll do the other side. So first I'm gonna do my elevator side here. Keep in mind that there's a push rod there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go right from this back portion. Press that down. I'm even gonna take a bead of glue right down the side. And I'm just going back, making sure that both of them are equal, and they are, and I'll let that dry. Now that the right side's done, I'm gonna do the same process on the left side. So lift it up out of the way, put a bead of glue right down over my flats, all the way to the back. Press it down into place. Check my angles, and let it dry. Once everything's dry, we can follow with a bead of glue on both sides of our elevators to give it tons of strength. I'll place a bead of glue on top of each vertical fin, and I'm gonna put one fin in first, press it down, 
find the other one. And I'm gonna press it down. Now it's very important as you hold these in place that the elevator is flush with the top of the vertical fence. The reason is, is this will control the incidence. If it's angled in one direction or the other, you may have your plane pitch forward or backwards. All right, friends, we are at the end of this video here. We have the airframe all complete. We have our wires ran. We have our servos ran. Our next step is in the next video, and that's where we're gonna be showing you how to hook up the electronics. We're gonna show you how to dial differential thrust and also take you out for your first flight. Thanks for building with me, and we'll see you next time.